Hey guys, welcome to Westside Farm Channel. I'm Dane Tindale, owner and operator of the farm. Yeah. Today's vlog is all about feed security. As we mentioned in the last video, two main components of anybody seeking to come into goat farming is housing and feed security. These are the main priority before you come in the industry. Okay, today's vlog, I have with me Khalil Brown from Piper Nutrition. He will be bringing you guys to the whole aspect and educating you guys about the feed security as it relates to animals. Guys, I'm here at Westside Farm. Thanks Mr. Tyndale for inviting me. And he's made an important statement earlier regarding how that new entrance would view goat rearing as we enter the industry. So one, let us talk about housing, critical in protecting animals from theft, protecting animals from the environment. But my favorite topic is definitely feed security. And I did a presentation the other day with the minister talking about how that we can seek an animal feed security plan, especially for our ruminant animals. So what we're going to do is talk a little bit on how is it that we should approach this business. One, if you want to start with 50 animals, how much feed is required daily to feed these 50 animals? We can start at even one. So for example, a mature female could roughly eat between 5 to 10 pounds depending on where she is within her production. That is 5 to 10 pounds of grass and goat concentrate. What is also is important also is the dry matter content of this feed. Farmers who eat or farmers who feed fresh grass would not see the response like farmers who feed hay. Why is it? Hay has less moisture and that increases dry matter intake. And dry matter intake ultimately leads to more animal performance. So you'll see more meat, even get more milk. So we have to take this into consideration. But then we have to look at it, what kind of land size do we need to basically house, say for example, 50 animals. The textbook will tell that animals require goat or sheep, it's 10 animals per acre. That is based on forages that can produce around 10 tons of dry matter on a yearly basis. However, we're moving forward into more fodder bank systems where we have like a Mombasa, a sorghum or a corn, and this can produce up to 20 tons of dry matter per acre. So this increases the carrying capacity of your farm, but the system changes. Fodder banks require a cut and carry system, and sometimes we might even have excess. So what do we do in a time of excess? We store. How is it that we can store? We can store by drying, same here that you see here on Sanjay farm, or we can use an ensiling method, which is that we put this grass in anaerobic conditions and preserve this grass as silage. So those are some of the key ways we can do for the conservation. But let's a little bit fine-tuned feed security. A further budget is what is important. Farmers should plan from day one up until day 365 what is required to feed these animals. And with that, we can basically go there and schedule what we pick up. For example, Sanjay say on weekends, he has to run and search and get fodder for his animals. He will collect some carrot, he will collect his hay, and he will go and look even normal cut and carry bush outside to carry on his farm to feed. We have to think about feed security. So guys, when going forward, please ensure that we calculate what is your farm fodder demand. And with that fodder demand, we can say, boy, a 70 to 40% ratio, 70% of my animal feed will be forages, and 30% will be concentrate. We use that as a model to kind of evaluate and to put together a schedule for our feeding system. So, big up Mr. Tindale. I hope you learn a lot from that. Alright, guys, stay tuned. And thank you for watching. Please remember to share, comment, like, and just follow us on the journey to agriculture in Jamaica. Big up.